test out the uh, hill descent thing. Yes, because this is such a hilly area. It is. Hello guys, welcome back to Tierspec TV. Recently we unveiled our latest Tierspec TV vehicle, the Discovery 2, in celebration of 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. However, as we also discussed in that video, it does need a little bit of work to get it up and running. And right here in this box, we have some of the very first bits that are going to get it up and running. So, Nissan, would you like to do the honors of opening this? I will. Magnif magnificent yellow box. Once we've done this as well, we're going to go take another look at the Disco 2 parked outside because we found out it does in fact move. Yes, uh, last time we, we filmed with it, we, we said that it is completely incapable of moving under its own power. But we have found a, a, a secret way, shall we say, <laughs> of getting it to move. Uh, and then we can discuss more about what actually is wrong with it. Um, so this is a package. What? Within the package. It's a package within a package. We love on packaging packages. And uh, this is from LOF Clutches in the UK. So you can probably guess what it is. Uh, yeah, this is a dual mass flywheel, which I brought. Uh, you can also use the one which is on the vehicle, but then you have to open it up and have a look and see if it's okay or not okay. Uh, Luke from uh, Loaf Clutches can probably tell you what you need to look after. Uh, he also said that to me. Uh, but I just went there and got a new one because I have absolutely no state of the vehicle whatsoever. And if we find out that we need to replace it, we have to get one shipped uh, pretty much overnight yeah. to get this uh, this thing done. Uh, so I just went ahead and got a brand new one as well. And this is not his own, it's just like a generic one thing from another company. Yeah, it's uh, uh, LU, Luke, LUK. DMF, fuel mass, flywheel. Uh, I don't even know if any TD5 comes with a single mass. But what dual mass is, is actually. Ow! <laughs> but what dual mass is, is actually. <laughs> okay, so I think we saw that coming. That's been falling down about three times before we hit the start. So, we just, uh, so Nissa had the brilliant idea of sticking a GoPro up on this uh, ventilation thing up here. Yeah. And um, yeah, about three times before we started filming, it fell down. And typically, it fell down. While we're filming, so yeah. let's just uh, dispense with that idea yeah. for now and just uh, continue over here. As you were saying uh, before, it started raining GoPros. Yeah, I don't know if any TD5 comes with a single uh, flywheel or this is called a dual, dual mass flywheel, which pretty much if when you've got a vehicle with very high torque, you want something with dual mass. Uh, is what I can kind of find out. I'm completely new to the <laughs> to the diesel scene when it comes to these things, but a dual mass flywheel is for very high torque, uh, so you don't smack anything or destroy anything, uh, which is pretty cool. I'm pretty sure that all gd 5s come with it. I'm not sure, don't hang me up on it. But <laughs> I got a dual mass now, so I'll be fitting this one onto it. I need some bolts as well. Uh, these are stretch bolts. Uh, you can get those off, uh, off Bearmark, eBay, get off road, any other part really. Uh, and you need to replace those because as I said, they're stretch bolts and when you torque them down, you do it, what was it, 40? Yeah, 40 newton meters, and after that you turn it 90 degrees and that kind of stretches them out and makes sure the lock complete and also it says here you have to use a Loctite as well. And so we get in, into detail when we do the, the actual fitment of this thing. But this is the heavy part of it. Ow. That is very nice. Now these parts within that box I'm pretty sure is what they actually produce at little clutches. This is like their own making. Uh, of their own products, and I haven't heard of a single case with a bad clutch coming from him. No. Uh, everybody's recommended him on the inter intervals. Oh, so, bubble wrap. Let's just appreciate the bubble wrap for 20 seconds. That's enough appreciating, let's get back to the clutch. All right. <laughs> Uh, and he asked if you could send some stickers, and I said oh, yes. So all the stickers. We have stickers. Very useful. Uh, so I'm definitely going to put some of these on. Those watches, Road Power Extreme. And this is the Extreme spec uh, because I'm going to go with the stage two remap to start off with, and after that I'm going to go into stage three hopefully with a uh, hybrid of VNT turbo or VGT turbo. 
uh, just to get that low torque power uh, because it will, it's mainly going to be used for road use uh, but it will fit a winch to a winch bumper and make it sort of off-road capable but it's not going to go off-road like we do but if there's somebody stuck I will still just not <laughs> stand there and look at them I will expect them to pull them out some way or another I think you better have them yeah. so what do we have in the box? we have this which is the what's it called? Release pull, bearing. Release bearing, exactly. And this is a heavy duty one. Uh, the normal ones, I believe, that is fitted is actually plastic. And this oh, is really? the heavy duty one. You can see how okay. thick and completely solid it is. Uh, and these ones, actually, Bob have one of these is faulty. But then when you put the clutch down, you hear like mm -hmm. saying like that sound. This is the yeah. the bearing is completely shut. Uh, that means you have to take the whole gearbox and everything out to replace it. So, brand new one of those, and we got, uh, what's that? I can't remember any of the names now. But this is the rod that goes from the clutch, uh, it's a slave cylinder, into the fork that then pushes uh, up and down. And these can get shorter or flat or all sort of things, so get a new one of these. It will be a pain in the butt to assemble everything and find out that this one is actually used or broken in any sort. Uh, 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 here we got the spigot bearing. I actually got just went up and brought a lift there, and also the bread tool box over there, which is like the whole tool set to remove one of these things. There's a million ways you can do it. We're gonna have a look and see how you can do it. Uh, but I'm gonna use a tool because if there's a tool for it, I want it. <laughs> you can never have too many tools. Absolutely. And got this plastic bit, which this rod sits into. I'm pretty sure. Uh, some kind of grease oily thing here. To lubricate, or maybe it's locked tight, and some bolts here with a plastic thread and anti lock thing. And here's the real deal. Whoa, oh, that looks nice. That collar that is cool. I always like when companies put effort into designing something that you know you're never going to see once it's installed. Yeah, like for me, that's just a sign of quality that they actually care about it because. You're never going to see that again once you no. put it in, so, but it still looks good. It does. Pretty much the TSB TV with their, uh, their uh, yeah. logo on the sides as well. Also Very nice. nice. And then this is the surface you also need to, to clean up before you fit it, because they do fit some kind of oily texture to it. Uh, you're just going to have a bad time if you replace it straight on. And the last bit here, which is the clutch plate itself, which is made from organic fibers you can get like carbon fibers and organic fibers uh, but this is uh, extreme spec uh, he does one over that but this is pretty that's only for, for trial driving and not normally road use and this will take the stage three from uh, from storm tuning as well so that is pretty much everything that comes in the box everything we need to replace uh, it's not because the clutch got any faults in it right now it uh, probably will if you put 250 brake horsepower through it will probably fail sooner or later. But when you take the gearbox and the bell housing and the reduction, uh, the low range gearbox out, it would just be anything but stupid to replace the, the clutch with it as yeah. well. Otherwise, you have yeah. to take all stuff apart when the clutch fails about 25,000 uh, kilometers down the range. Yeah, and then uh, LOF clutches got in touch and said that they would be happy yeah. to help. So we could not resist the opportunity to uh, get some of their fantastic products. So yeah. we look forward to putting these to the test once we get the disco up and running. Yeah, we don't know how these perform, but I've only heard good things about them. Yeah, yeah. and exactly. that, they only like only do clutches; they don't do anything else. They're really into their stuff. Uh, yeah, and they're always coming up with new products. I just came out here to, uh, in the new year. Came out with that BMW clutch for the M57. Mm. Uh, so you can actually also change that because that's also fit in some Land Rovers. Uh, so they keep developing new products, doing new things, which is really cool. Yeah, so go and have a look at their website, and they do different kind of specs. They got like the normal road spec, the power spec, and then this is the extreme spec. And you can kind of read what it says, what it does, like what kind of needs you have to do. Do you love towing? Do you just do normal driving? Do you have any kind of upgrades on the vehicle? Then they will yeah, point yeah. out and see which one matches exactly the best. What you need. Yeah, otherwise just get in touch with Luke and he will tell you what you need. But apart from that, I think we've unboxed everything. Yeah. So otherwise, we're going to go outside now and have a look at the actual discovery itself and talk more about what is actually wrong with it and whether it can or cannot move. 
And the last thing we totally forgot about telling you that you also need for a plus change is the rear, the, the, the rear crank oil seal. Uh, we can actually go and have a look on the RB, which is just behind me. Got exactly the same sort of uh, fitment, uh, but you need to replace one of these as well because it would just be a pain in the butt to fit everything. And finding out that this one has failed. So this is uh, he also sends uh, uh, OE OEM general clutch or general uh, TT5 parts, manual parts uh, to go along with the fitment. Uh, this is really easy to fit, uh, and it's just going to save you loads of time. So we're going to go all that. Probably next month we will start doing the, the swap. We're going to do it over a couple of days because we don't have that much space in here. Uh, vehicles and equipment keeps coming in and out of here, so we've got limited time, uh, but we will do it all as fast as possible. But this is also a thing you need, and he also sells this on his website. So it's pretty cool, it's like a complete package you get when you order all these things. Uh, so let's go and have a look on the RV where this thing actually sits. So now we move over to the RB. This is of course not a Land Rover engine, but it got completely the same uh, concept of it. We got this plate right here, which is what we just saw uh, a second ago, which is the plate we want to replace on the TD5. So you just undo all the screws and pull it out. Now this is the rear of the crank, where the spigot bearing sits right in here. This one actually still got a spigot bearing in it, uh, which we have to pull out. Uh, this is where the gearbox then goes into this bit and sits onto it and this one starts leaking oil around here You're gonna have to take everything apart just to get in and change the seal uh, So that's why we want to change it now. We got everything apart Once again, we are sitting in a car sniffing things. <laughs> that's like a... that's strong. <laughs> that's the smell of England. No, that, that's <laughs> definitely not England, that's like... I think very fruity. Yeah, I think it's sweet. I think this is more... Uh, uh, how do we say? Mediterranean, I don't know. Mediterranean. <laughs> Tropical, that's the word, that's Tropical. the probably a better yeah, one. Yeah, probably a better one. Look at that wet. Look at that bit. Yeah. I can't do that, can <laughs> I? <don't know. laughs> that's the camera. Anyway, so we are now in back in the Discovery 2. And Nivzi, you made a Discovery. Huh? Uh, uh -huh. You made a discovery <laughs> in the discovery <laughs> in the discovery since last time. Did you not? I did indeed. Uh, I was messing about with the gearbox, trying to figure out what's actually wrong with it, and I found out that it is stuck in fourth gear. So if you activate low range and put it into fourth gear, it will actually move. But when you do go into third gear, it will just go nowhere. <laughs> uh, what I also did is I. Uh, with a bit of hope uh, that year, because I emptied both the gearbox from oil and the transfer box from oil, before oil, and the gearbox had about half a litre in it. I think that's about two and a half litres it needs to run. Yeah. Uh, so I replaced that with some uh, fresh oil. I also did that with the transfer box. Transfer box looks fine, but somebody had opened it at some point because loads of bolts have snapped, and they did like their own little homework onto closing it. Mm. Uh, I don't know what they put inside of it and what has been wrong with it. So that's going to be a bit interesting. Uh, but otherwise than that, I was hoping that the oil slowly gonna like open up the gearbox again uh, and be completely stuck. Uh, I don't think it's gonna happen. And that thing we can hear whenever we're just standing in neutral, that very grinding sound. I think I think that's the oil pump having had any oil, so it's just getting hot when it runs. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I think a new gearbox is on the way. Uh, otherwise, Daniel from Stone Tuning also said that some of his clients had a problem, pretty much the same, uh, but the only. Thing they had to do is open up this whole bit, and like we did on the slick shift video, yeah. you have like the gear lever going into that little cup, yeah, and yeah. then select the gears. And sometimes that grub screw comes out, which just can't select any gears or anything. Uh, but we like I can feel selecting gears, and when I go into reverse, it also actuates like the reverse rear switch, thing yeah, yeah, and all that. So I don't think that's a problem. You actually like feel, feel like pretty much like you're going into gear and all of it, yeah, and it's a lot lighter yeah, you, you now once you that, put yeah. oil into it. So putting into fourth is like the same putting into third or all the other ones. So I think it is just stock. Okay. Uh, well, I still got new parts for it from Get Off Road. Uh, those, <laughs> this little thing we were sniffing earlier. Yes, you bought an air freshener from them. I did. Which happened to come with these. Yeah, these new <laughs> parts. 
This uh, is a, a seal kit. Yeah. Bush selector. Bush change pivot. And a snap ring e extra. Yep, um, so and we have those, uh, including the yeah. clutch we just unboxed, and then hopefully a new gearbox exactly. in the, the near future. This one will probably go onto the new gearbox, I won't bother putting into this one. Uh, but I will open up and have a look and see that's a simple question, but I don't think it is because it is also grinding itself when you put into it. And then we've got these ones which are for the power steering because it's leaking a lot from the high pressure side, which is where the drop down is, yeah. drop down arm is. Yeah. So we'll be replacing these once we get into the workshop as well. And I've heard that it's going to be a bitch of a job to do. But enough of that, we'll try and start him up. And this is seven days ago since last try and start him. We have had about minus five degrees, I think, at night. That was no hesitation at all. So we should probably yeah. do... Uh, 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 uh. Oh, we have heated front windscreen, we do don't we? That thing. That one. And we do... Turn this guy on. Uh, that thing. <laughs> and Nissa is not that used thing. to having this much technology in his car at all. Oh, it moves! A bit of blood. It moves! It, what we also found out is that it already got a straight pipe. So everybody's saying, like, you need straight pipe, you need a straight pipe. I already got one. <laughs> Expect to sound like that. got any kind of remaps or anything. I don't think. Ooh, we also we can test out the uh, hill descent thing. Yes, because this is such a hilly area. It is. But well, you can actually hear the like thing working. So I press that one and that light comes on. And I let go of it. There you go. I'm not touching anything right now. It's off. How cool is that? Uh, but you can actually hear the ABS start working with what it does, it goes in and brakes the individual wheel to slow down the vehicle so you don't have to block the brakes to do anything. You just put that on and slowly go down the hill and then it will adjust the speed depending on what gear you are and how much you press, uh, you press the brakes or use the brakes. It's already smelling very tropical in here. It is. <laughs> you feel the jungle. <laughs> the, the jungle drums. Yeah. <laughs> Safari hats coming on. <laughs> First gear, nothing. Second gear, nothing. Third gear, nothing. It's pretty much like in, it's in neutral. You get that rattling. But fourth gear. So that is what I think it is, that it's completely ran out of oil and that way it can't lubricate itself and it's gotten hot and then just stuck in gear. Uh, and you just don't want to go out of the gear, the fork is like, the selector fork is sit on, or set onto the fourth gear now. But a new gearbox will sort that out, hopefully. Oh, I also figured out the lights here on the bull bar, it's operated by this thing. So if you do like that, you put high beam on. Then you can like select on and off from what you want. Uh, so they do actually work. I don't know if the rear lights work on the rear bumper. I'm just gonna swap the rear bumper for one made out of metal instead. Uh, I think it looks better and just a bit more rough than that plastic bit. So neutral, and I let go of the clutch, and you can actually hear the gearbox. Yeah, something's grinding, but. It's been better now that I put new oil in it, so it's not as violent. Look at this, you can hear metal hitting metal. But there's still something loose in there. Put the clutch in, let it go. Yeah, there's something. Rolling hole, bro.
think that concludes this episode for the Discovery 2. What's uh, next? When do we think progress will be continued? Next will be next month, once I get some more monies. And I'll <laughs> okay. buy a new gearbox for it. A restored gearbox. Uh, and then we'll do, I don't know, probably take about three days mm-hmm. to swap it and see if I can get a third guy in as well. So we could just focus on filming and then me and the other guy will do all the other things. And yep. then we get some proper good footage of it. And people can see exactly what it takes to swap a gearbox. We, we haven't done that any time before. Have no, we? no, we haven't done something no. that big, I don't think so. So as Nissa said, we'll be changing the gearbox and clutch and everything and documenting all of that over several days. And then once that is done, we'll be getting so many videos, uh, or doing so many videos with this uh, discovery off-roading and all kinds of yeah. things. So it'll be really, really interesting because it's uh, not something we've done on the channel yet. And as we made clear in our 10,000 subscriber video, we're rather excited mm. to uh, to uh, live the discovery life um, <laughs> now. So, uh, but But... Do not fear the Defenders and Series and 101s and everything will still be on the yeah. channel as well this year. Plenty, just as much as they were before. We now have this trusty, broken discovery with us for the journey as well. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and we will see you in the next video.